Six, welcome to Cal International College. My name is Miss Thompson, I'm the Head of Achievement for Year 7 and welcome to your virtual tour. This is Gamble Avenue and this is where every pupil enters for the school day. You'll also use this to head over to PE and this is where the buses come and you'll get the bus at the end of the school day. You just walk down here and the school is over there. Canteen. This is where you're going to have your school dinners and you can also eat your lunches here. Now at the moment it doesn't quite look like a canteen but hopefully when you come it will. These are our atrium steps and this is where we have the seminars in school. I would now like to introduce you to a very important person at Carly, the principal of Carly, Mr Sherwin. Hello sir. Hello, come in. Hello. Hello. We're doing our virtual tour sir. Oh good, good, very good. Would you like to give your message to them now, sir? I'd love to. You're really fortunate to get a place here at Cowley because of all the opportunities that we offer. So please make sure that you get involved in everything, inside school and outside school. Thank you, Mr. Sherin. And now I'd like to introduce you to our head teacher, Mr. Cormac. Hello, sir. Hello, Miss Thompson. Would you like to give your message to the students, sir? Absolutely. Right then, Year 7 will call you. We uh, would normally start off with doing an assembly in your transition day. And um, I would normally be speaking to you about some key information to help you have a really good start to your time at Cowley. But I'm really excited about you coming to Cowley and starting your next chapter and becoming those wonderful Cowleyans that we've got here. But saying that, I would also be telling, speaking to your parents and giving them some top tips to help you with your transition. But I'm going to give you some five top tips to think about over the next few weeks. The first one is, please do not worry. The staff and the students at Cowley are absolutely wonderful and they will do everything to support you and guide you in your time at Cowley. So please do not worry. And do ask us any questions if you can have any concerns over the holidays. Drop us an email or get your parents to phone in and we'll hope, hopefully uh, get that sorted for you. The second thing is to completely immerse yourself into Cowley life. We're a big school with loads and loads of opportunities from sports to performing arts to all the wonderful clubs and trips that you'll get an opportunity to make some great memories for the future. The next top tip is get excited over the summer. You're going to be joining a wonderful school, becoming a Cowley Inn, and you're going to meet some amazing new friends in the for the, that will stay with you in the future. The next thing is, you would have heard about Cowley having very high standards. The staff will never settle for second best, and we need to make sure that you never settle for second best. So always work hard, aim for the best in your lessons, in your learning, your homework, in your behaviour and attendance, and I will guarantee that you'll be a success at Cal. And the final thing is, for the next two months over the summer, use your time productively. Don't waste your summer. Get out, be active, and do lots and lots and lots of reading. Keep reading, read to your parents, read to your family, just keep reading because that will definitely help you with your transition. I look forward to seeing you all and getting to know you all in September. Thank you. Welcome to your year team corridor. This is where you'll spend your team time with your team tutors. And this right here is our year team office. This is where Mrs. me and Mrs Mason will be based. Hi Year 6, my name is Mrs Mason, um, I'll be looking after you from September working alongside Miss Thompson, really looking forward to working with you, um, I believe I've already worked with some of your brothers and sisters in the past, so I'm really looking forward to it, have a good summer and I look forward to seeing you then. I just want to speak to you a bit more about my role as Head of Achievement for Year 7, I will mainly be your support system in school, you'll see me every day before team time, if you have any issues or concerns or you just want to speak to somebody, Come and speak to me or Mrs. Mason. I'll also be checking on how you're doing lesson, looking at your achievement points, and your behaviour points, and monitoring your progress. I can't wait to start with you all. 
And this is the year seven playground and luckily for you, it's just yours and you'll have it the whole year. You can come here for your lunch and break time. Hi, I'm Mrs Quinney and I teach English at Cowley. We're really looking forward to seeing you soon to do some great English activities. So in English in year seven, we do lots of reading, we do lots of writing, poetry, plays, Shakespeare, and we do a great reading scheme called Accelerated Reader, where we quiz on the computers and you can earn lots of rewards. We do reward trips based on the results that you get from reading. So it's really important that until we see you, you get on with your reading and you read some fabulous books. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Hello Year 6 and welcome to the Cowley Maths Department. My name is Mr Howarth, I'm the Head of Maths here and I'm really looking forward to seeing you all next year. At Cowley you'll be picking up where you left off at primary school with number work, shape work etc but then we'll be taking things a lot further. We'll be looking at areas of maths such as algebra, geometry, statistics and uh, really pushing you to your limits, seeing how good we can make you as a mathematician. As I say we're looking forward to seeing you next year and uh, in the meantime have a good holiday. Bye now. So hi all the uh, current year sixes. Uh, my name is Mr Brooks. I'm the head of science here at Cowley. Um, sorry you couldn't come up and do some taster sessions before the end of the year, but we're all really excited to, to get you starting in science when come September time, where we'll be looking at, you know, e equations, explosions. We'll look at space. We'll see how forces work. And who knows, we might even cure the odd virus or two. I don't know if you've read about that. It's kind of big at the moment. But um, stay safe over the summer um, and get yourself ready to, uh, to get involved when we come back in September. See you soon. One of the fantastic things about high school is the variety of lessons that you will do. We are currently in a technology room and I'm sure at some point you'll be using this piece of equipment. I know from previous years that one of the lessons that the Year 7 are most excited for is food technology. We are currently in one of the feed rooms where you'll be cooking sweet and savoury dishes. Hello Year 6, my name is Mrs Smith and I'm in charge of history here at Cowley International College. We cannot wait to meet you and for you guys to get stuck into your history lessons. We have something for just about everybody, from our budding historians to our complete novices. For our military historians, we have a whole heap of wars that we're going to be studying, from the Battle of Hastings to the War of the Roses, World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War, and even more recently, looking at the War on Terror. For our social historians, we are going to be taking a look at the real nitty-gritty of what it was like to live in these times. In the medieval ages, taking a look at the knights in shining armour, our princesses in castles, our jousting, looking at the Tudor times, make sure you don't lose your head. Taking a look at the Industrial Revolution, think Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist, workhouses, and of course our notorious serial killer, Jack the Ripper. How was he never caught? We're going to be taking a look at a whole range of British monarchs, taking a look at the good, the bad, and the just plain ugly. We cannot wait to meet you guys, but for now we have a little challenge for you. Here at Cowley International College, there is nothing the history department likes more than a good old sing-along to one of the many wonderful, horrible history songs. So my challenge to you, Year 6, is can you learn all the words to the Horrible History's monarch song, ready for a good old sing-along in September? For now, take care, stay safe, and like all good historians, keep calm and carry on. Hello Year 6, I'm Mrs Williams and I take care of food technology at Cowley. We're keen to get you cooking in food, so once we've looked at the health, safety and hygiene, the food really begins. We will go on a sweet and savoury journey, making a huge range of dishes including healthy family meals, snacks and desserts, as well as Christmas and Easter treats. You'll be working in a fast-paced kitchen as part of a busy team and you'll get to take home what you've made each week. With a bit of luck, we'll have the next Gordon Ramsay amongst you. Now food is part of design and technology at Cowley and the rest of the technology team are really looking forward to meeting you. You'll have the opportunity to design and make products in textiles, graphics and resistant materials. You'll have the opportunity to use a variety of tools, equipment and specialist machines like 3D printers, laser cutters and CAD CAM sewing machines. So from all of us in technology, have a wonderful summer, stay safe and we look forward to seeing you in September for an action-packed year of learning. Hello, my name's Mr Jones. I'm in charge of computing at Cowley. 
The first unit we study is eSafety, teaching you how to stay safe online, and you'll get a certificate for passing this unit of work. Next, we look at cracking codes. The next unit is about data representation, how computers use a series of ones and zeros to represent images, texts, and sounds. Then we use a database to solve a murder mystery. We look at website design and you'll design your own website. We do some programming on a device called a microbit with lots of lights and buttons. Then we'll look at programming uh, using a computer code called Python. Then we look at controlling devices like street lamps and traffic lights. Then we'll do some surveys and data logging based around Alton Towers. We'll do some digital art and make some posters, some spooky posters. We'll look at 3D printing to make different objects out of plastic. We'll make a board game and the documentation to go with it and some counters and some dice. We'll look at a day at the zoo and plan all the kind of things to have a successful day out at the zoo. And then finally, we're going to make a computer game. We look forward to seeing you in September. We have ukuleles, we have keyboards. Where do you think we are now? Yes, that's right, we are in music. Now, this subject offers absolutely fantastic extracurricular activities, in particular our choir. I can't wait for you to hear them and hopefully join them too. Hello, my name is Mr Watkins and I'm in charge of performing arts here at Cowley. Performing arts consists of music, acting and drama, and dance. Uh, at Cal there are so many opportunities in class time that you'll be working within the theatre, learning lots of different dance styles, acting styles, and in music, working in the practice rooms, playing guitars, bass guitars, the drum kits, and working in bands, and uh, there are lots of opportunities within class and outside of class, such as choirs, rock school, um, and then there's the big musical we do each year. Last year we did Greece, so hopefully you could be next year involved with some of those very, very, very exciting things that we do here at Cowley. I'm excited to see you and all the rest of the other members of the department are really excited to see you as well in September. Have a lovely, lovely summer and I'll see you all then. Bye bye. Hi everyone, my name's Miss Rylands. I'm the Head of Community and Beliefs at Cowley. We're really lucky as a department because we get to teach you for two of your subjects that you'll study. So you'll study RE with us and you'll study PSHE and that goes right through from year seven to year 11. These are some of the other teachers that you might be taught by. Hi, I'm Mrs. Reed. Hi, I'm Miss Horton. Hi, I'm Miss Eve. Hi, I'm Miss Costello. Now, as part of your RE curriculum, we encourage you to think critically about everything in the world, to question why we do the things that we do. We love having discussions and debates, and we do those around the major world religions, such as Christianity, Islam and Hinduism. But we also address some of the bigger questions in life, like can one person change the world? Do you need religion to be a good person? PSHE is much more about you and your own personal development. So we look at issues that are really important for your lives. We look at ways of keeping yourself safe. We look at handling different relationships, as well as lots of the challenges that you'll face growing up. We love teaching our subjects because we get to know you all really well. So we look forward to welcoming you in September. Bonjour to le monde. Hello, my name is Miss Hale and as you probably worked out, I look after the languages department at Cowley where we do French, German and Spanish. And when we see you in year six, you'll be doing French with us. And I know that some of you will have done it at primary school and maybe you've done a bit of German, a bit of Spanish, but we've got a fabulous programme to make sure that you are all at the same point. So head over to the Cowley website and have a look at some of our transition work. And we really look forward with all the department to seeing you soon. Stay safe, stay well. See you soon, au revoir. Welcome to the massive 3D pitch over here at PE. There is many facilities here at Cowley and you're going to have a fantastic time in your PE and games lessons. Morning Year 6, my name's Mr Gordon and I'm in charge of all the PE and sport here at Cowley. Now I haven't got enough time in this very short video to tell you all about the amazing opportunities you'll have when you arrive. So, if you've got any worries or concerns about PE and sport, please email into school 
And in the meantime, I'll wait till we meet and I will give you the lowdown on all the opportunities you will have. Take care, stay safe, goodbye. Hello, I'm Miss Francis, Head of Geography at Cowley. When you join us, you'll study a variety of different topics. We'll look at development, earthquakes, cities, that's just a few. We also study a variety of different places. We'll look at Russia, India, Rio and the Yorkshire Dales. Plenty of opportunity in geography to study fieldwork outside the classroom. The geography department look forward to welcoming you all very soon. Take care. Welcome to science. This is where our laboratories are and you'll be able to do some fun experiments. Speaking of which, I think it's about time you had a lesson. Over to you, Mr Brooks. Oh, here we go. Hello everybody, it's Mr Brooks again here from uh, the Science Department of Cowley. I know it's uh, challenging times at the moment, isn't it, when, you've, when you're not going to be able to come up and uh, do some science before you start in September. So what we thought we'd do is we'd bring some to you. So I've uh, got a few little things set up. I've got uh, Mr Pemberton, who's our lead technician, who's going to be helping me out today. Hello. So, so, you, so there you go, you just heard him. So you may well see him moving around the camera around or helping me with some of the little bits of things that we're going to show you today. So, as you can see, we're in one of our science rooms up here, is, uh, which I'm sure many of you are going to be in. Nice, big, airy, great big rooms with all the, all the equipment that, that you need to do your science um, over the next few, few years. Um, so, like I say, over the next 10 minutes or so, we're just going to walk you through some little bits of, of, of some experiments that you'll be able to um, undertake yourself or be certainly taking part in with your teachers as you come to Cowley in, se in September and what we wanted to show you because science isn't just one subject it's why well, it's the world's greatest subject it's actually made up of three isn't it it's made up of biology it's made up of chemistry and it's made up of physics and all those three elements combined together and um, that you'll be studying over the next seven years hopefully um, so we're just going to show you some little bits of things um, that uh, just to uh, Keep you uh, in that to, just to keep in mind, sorry, as we as you go through the through the summer, um, and obviously we know that science is something that you'll have done little bits of when you're at uh, primary school, but maybe not huge amounts, or certainly not with the levels of equipment that we've got. And sometimes you, some people are a little bit um, apprehensive, a little bit scared, if you like, of doing the, the the science work. But there really isn't anything to be. To be scared about because we will train you to make sure that you are as safe as you possibly can be in, when you come into when you come to science in September and what people are always really wanting to see is usually these these bunts and burners if I just move the camera down a little bit there where are we there we go we can see I've got a Bunsen already set up that, that we're going to use and people get scared and they don't like light in the Bunsen's because obviously you're taught aren't you not to use <coughs> excuse me not to mess with flames and not to mess with fire rightly so but a Bunsen burner is a great bit of equipment named after a, a, a scientist as well an Austrian scientist Bunsen um, who unfortunately died a pauper he, he didn't uh, trademark he didn't patent this uh, this this uh, this piece of equipment and so he didn't he doesn't he didn't get any money for it but that's that's a really sad story but a true story and the Bunsen burner might look like it's got this huge flame coming out of it, but it's actually with one of the safest pieces of equipment in the entire department because it's a controlled flame and we can determine how hot we want it. We can either have it on a cool flame that looks yellow in colour or by simply me moving this air hole, it turns into a very hot flame. So it goes to about 450, 470 degrees C. And there's a little bit of something on the end of that one, which is why it isn't perfectly blue. But that's what's called the safety flame because it isn't as hot as normal. Um, so when we're not using our Bunsen's, you'll see that they'll always be on like that. And they're contained within this space, so even me moving my arms and my hands around here, I can't feel anything, <coughs> it's not going to do me any harm. Um, it's just a very contained, uh, contained flame. And we use them quite a lot, obviously, and we use them more often, for example, when we're looking at combustion, how things burn, but also how we undergo different, how different metals, for example, undergo different properties. And we're going to start off today by... I'm just going to show you this one. This is a, um, a metal. This is magnesium. Oh, let me just take that out of my hands. Clunk. This is magnesium ribbon. Okay, and it's a, it's a metal. It might not look like a metal that you know of. Like, that's a very hard. I can bend this one. In fact, I think I can even rip it with my fingers. I can. Look at that. How strong am I? Um, and magnesium has got some very... We know it's a metal because it's shiny. You can see how shiny it is there. Yeah. If I leave it out in the air too long, it'll rust just like most metals will. 
but it also has other properties that when, it, that when I react it with something else, and in this case I'm going to react it with the oxygen that's in the air around us, it's going to change. So to react it with the oxygen that's around, I'm going to use a really, really hot flame on my bumps. And so I'm going to pop on my safety glasses, my safety goggles, safety specs, whatever you want to call them. And I'm going to show you what happens to our silver, shiny, bendable, soft metal when it actually burns. Okay, so I'm just going to put it inside those tongs like that. Now, this is when we do when we do this in school. I always say to the children, now I say, now, don't look at the light. Okay, because I'm going to put it into the Bunsen flame and we're going to see what happens to it. Don't look at that. It's the worst thing you can say to kids. So I'm going to say to you, don't look at the light. All right, here we go. So I'm going to put it into the tip of the blue flame. And let's see what happens to it. Then, oops, let's take it out once it gets going. So our, our magnesium has turned into this, what looks like a red hot, and is that red hot, it's actually white hot. Let's burn the rest of that again. You see how bright it's going? Well, the camera doesn't pick it all up if I just turn it around gently. Okay. And that is a metal that's been what's called oxidised. And it's not called magnesium anymore. It's now called magnesium oxide. And if I just take that off and put the safety flame back on. Safety first, obviously. And if I bring the forceps to the camera, can you see that white powder on the end? That's what's left of the magnesium ribbon. It's now called magnesium, excuse me, oxide. <coughs> and it's, um, sorry, I've not got coronavirus. That was a, just a little bit of frog in my throat. Uh, that's just what's left of the magnesium. It's called magnesium oxide. It's a white powder. And um, if you've ever had a paracetamol or an aspirin, it's actually used in that. It uh, prevents water from affecting the tablet. So a big change in the properties of our, of our magnesium there, just simply by simply by heating them. So we'll do some work on the changing properties of, of elements and that's now not an element anymore, it's called a compound because it's reacted two elements together, our magnesium and our oxygen. Okay, so a little bit of chemistry there to get us going. I'm going to just turn our bulk and flame off and Mr. Pemberton's going to put the, uh, the lights back on and I'm just going to ask him to move the camera a little bit closer to this next little demonstration that we're, we're going to do. I'm also going to move the Bunsen out of the way we don't need that anymore. All right, that's lovely. Now this is um, a very well used experiment that you may well have seen on the on the internet. It's called, or on um, any TED talks, or you may have seen video clips of it. It's called elephant's toothpaste. And again, it's a chemical reaction, but I'm going to link it in with some biology. Okay, I'm going to link it in with some biology because our, our second science, if you like, that first one was more chemistry based. And to do that, I'm just going to pop on some of these uh, rubber gloves because I'm going to be using something that's not, uh, that's not great. Okay, now you're made up of billions of cells. That's when we do biology. Your body's made up of billion cells and they're all functioning to do their own individual job. So a blood cell will do a different job to a liver cell which will do a different job to a spleen cell or a heart cell or a lung cell, for example. But they all, all living cells, have one thing in common. Is that they all make, as a byproduct, as some waste, they all make something called hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide has got a chemical formula very, very similar to a chemical formula that I bet you've heard of before. I bet you've heard of this one, H2O, and I can almost hear you all in the background going, yeah, I know what that is, it's water. We like water, we give it a tick. But all of your cells right now as you're watching or listening to this video are all making a chemical byproduct called hydrogen peroxide. It's very similar looking in the formula to water. Instead of H2O, it's H2O2, yeah? But hydrogen peroxide is incredibly toxic to us, okay? We're not really, we should really be doing this experiment in a, in a fume cupboard, if I'm being honest, because one of the byproducts that it gives off can damage our cells. In fact, Mr. Pemberton, Pemberton was telling me today 
that it's the reason why radiation damages our cells so much is it because it reacts with this hydrogen peroxide and makes us really, really poorly. So our, our cells make this, um, ends up, uh, make this product called hydrogen peroxide. So why don't we become ill with it? Well, because what you've got inside your cells is the name of an enzyme. Now these, this enzyme is called catalase. And it breaks down the hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen, in which case it, can be, it, be, it becomes made harmless. So, and we're going to actually show you how that's done with this experiment on, um, on, on elephant's toothpaste. I'm going to use this massive uh, measuring cylinder. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to pour a little bit of fairy liquid in, first of all. Just a dribble or two. If I'm doing this wrong, Mr. Pemberton will let me know. Now, because hydrogen peroxide has some nasty elements in it, and we know it's got some nasty elements in it, because we're on the side of all of our chemical bottles that we use, it tells us what they are. And this one um, tells us that it is corrosive. That's what the little picture of the hand being dissolved for, and the little picture of the metal bar. And this is it. it's also harmful, which is what the exclamation mark means as well. So we've got to be very careful. Like I say, this is made hydrogen peroxide. You can just about read that, hydrogen peroxide solution. It's made in all of your cells. Okay, so I'm going to pour about 100 millilitres of hydrogen peroxide into this beaker. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to add a couple of drops of food colouring, just for artistic licence. Quite a lot of food colouring, but there we go. I'll pop that over there. And then we've got some, what's called activated yeast. Now these yeast are going to be, uh, we're going to, what we're going to use to represent what's happening in all your cells. And I'm just going to shake a few of these yeast cells, because they've got the catalase in them. So let's just put a few of those in there. Can you all see that? Oh, there it goes. Woo! You can see why it's called elephant's toothpaste. And that's been formed because that hydrogen peroxide, the H2O2, has been broken up into water and all of these bubbles are containing oxygen glass. And it will keep going. And if, I, if you could feel I could, I could tell you this is really now quite warm. It generates lots of heat as well. And lots of oxygen. And as, it's, as that yeast is breaking down that hydrogen peroxide that we poured in, it's making more and more of the oxygen and it makes more and more of this um, elephant's toothpaste. And I don't know if you can see on the video, you can see what looks like steam being given off there. Now Mr. Pemberton might tell me, is that water evaporating or is that oxygen gas? That's steam. That's steam. So it's some of the water that's evaporating because of the heat. I'd say that's, it's not hot enough to not touch, but it's, it's, it's generating quite a bit of heat in there as well. Look at that, lovely, isn't it? Why is it called elephant's toothpaste? Oh, I see, because it looks like toothpaste for an elephant. So there we go. So that's, you know, that's obviously not happening like that in all of your cells, but the principle of what's happening is applying there into your cells. That nasty hydrogen peroxide is... It's being broken down there. Okay. Right, I'll just slip off my my gloves. We'll leave that playing for a second or two. I can take my safety glasses off. And we'll uh, we'll move on to our third one. We'll come back to that. We'll see what it looks like right at the end. So our th that's that's a little bit of well it's chemistry again, but it links in with biology. And then and then this third and final strand, if you like. I'm just going to come and step round here for you, is all to do with physics. Now, many of you will have heard about burning and biology stuff, and physics is usually the one that people don't know too much about. But physics, so as our, my physics teachers here at Cowley will tell you, is, is what all, other science, science, all the other sciences are based around. Now, I have my doubts about that, but it is, does have some amazing facts as physics. And this first one, so we do lots of topics in physics, and this first one, is all to do with something called refraction. Now, you may well have heard of refraction in your other studies, but you probably don't realise, and I don't know if you can see this too clearly. I'm just going to bring this towards the camera there. 
It might look there, mind you, it might look like this is just a beaker of water. You can see my uh, jumper through the through the through the glass, um, and you can see it relatively clearly as well. You can see my lanyard as well as I move it move it around there. And refraction is all to do with how it is that light travels at different speeds as it goes through different objects. So, for example, if you were to pop a pencil into the water, and you can try this obviously at home, when you pop your pencil to your eye, it looks like, and just slightly you can see on the video, on the, on the screen there, it looks like as the pencil is going into the water that it's bending. And the reason it appears to bend is because light travels at a different speed. And that's, that's something that we can study and that scientists have used as well. But what's really freaky about some of this is that even though that looks like it's an empty vessel, it actually isn't empty. And I'm actually touching here, as I put my hands in, I can feel and I'm touching some uh, a type of um, a material that's been made that has what's called the same refractive index as water. Can you see that ball? Can you spell make that? It looks like a clear... Um, bouncy ball I guess if you like well it's actually full of them if I just scoot my hand in there you can just see them all on, on, on my hand there and when we pop them into the water it appears that they disappear and the reason they disappear is because they have what's called the same refractive index as, as water does as the light is passing through so it bends the light in exactly the same way as water so they appear invisible so <clears throat> that's maybe perhaps in the future how we make invisible cloaks or super tech or super highly invisible submarines if we can coat the outside of them with a substance that refracts light in the same method like that i don't know maybe it already exists and and some governments have already got it and we'll get political now finally then finally our physics one we talk a lot about sound in physics as well and uh, just to finish off our little a little demonstration i guess if you like is that we've, I'm going to produce a sound, okay? I'm going to produce a sound that Mr. Pemberton, who's young, much younger than I am, and myself, we're not going to be able to hear it, and only you are going to be able to hear this sound. And this is a signal generator, and when I turn it on, it's going to make a really high-pitched noise. Now, I can hear that, and that's currently at, um, is that 12,000 hertz, Mr. Pemberton, yeah? That's currently at 12,000 hertz. Okay, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to move it so that I can't hear this sound anymore. But because your hearing and your receptor cells and your ears are more conducive to hearing these, these higher pitch frequencies, I'll stop hearing it. Which is there. Now I can't hear anything at all at the moment. Um, it might actually be doing your heads in though, but in fact many, many shopkeepers actually used to actually play this outside their shops to disperse crowds of youths. Um, so it's seen as being a, 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 an anti-social um, disperser. Um, but like I say, it wouldn't work on me because I'm a little bit older, a little bit deafer, and uh, you're probably going mental now listening to that. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. So one quite quick last look at our elephant toothpaste, as you can see there it is, it's uh, made a right royal mess now but uh, ooh, it's generating plenty of heat that, isn't it? but it's, it's, and it's finally stopped as all of the um, hydrogen peroxide has been broken down by the, the catalase in the yeast. Okay, so um, I know it's not the same as being here, I'll just move that back so you can, can say uh, our final messages to you. So I know it's not the same as being here but I hope uh, just a little quick in a few little um, experiments there just on the kind of flavor of the kind of things that you're going to do not just over the next five years but over the next seven years here at, at Cowley as well um, so I just want to leave you with something that you can do at home yourself I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to go and have a go at doing it and figure out if you know the answer okay what I'd like you to do I'd like you to get yourself a glass of water at home and put some ice in it and I want you to fill it right to the brim right to the brim of your glass okay and i want you to say to I want you to have a, ask yourself this question what's going to happen when the ice melts do you think the water level will stay exactly the same do you think the water level will go down in the glass or do you think water will pour over the edge of your glass okay 
So get yourself a glass, fill it right to the brim, put some ice in, fill it right to the brim, wait for the ice to melt, and see if you can answer that question. And you, hopefully you'll be amazed at the result. So once more, does, it, does water flow over the top? Does it stay where it is? Or does the water level drop? Hope you've enjoyed some of that. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing you all in September. You're going to have some questions I'm sure that you're going to want answering. It's really sad that you can't come in before the end of term and, and, and meet your form team, your team tutors and your science teachers and have a little look around the school. But please don't worry about coming to, the, coming to Cowley as a new school. Don't worry about any of the science. It's perfectly safe. All of the science staff are incredibly good at what they do. I wouldn't have hired them if they weren't. Our technicians are the best in the country as well, so they help us out too. So have a really great summer, have a really safe summer, and we can't wait to see you um, in September. Take care now. See you later. Hello, I'm Mr Coulson, and this is Rolo, and he is Cowley's therapy dog. So Rolo's job is to uh, look after people, make them feel happy, Okay, and generally just be a good friend for them and someone to cuddle if they need to. Um, he'll be based in the SSU and over on the sixth form. And uh, your form, or sorry, your team, might have the opportunity to look after him for the day or maybe take him for a walk or even groom him and give him a good brush. So we look forward to seeing you in September, uh, both Rollo and I. Rollo, give me Paul. Give me Paul. Paul. Bye-bye. We are now at the library. You will have a library lesson once a fortnight. You'll be given a reading book and you'll also be able to take part in our accelerated reading programme. Okay, while you are here, I brought together a panel of students to answer some of the questions you may have before you start with us at Cowley. If you get lost during the school day, there will be teachers on every single corridor to help you. There is also boards which state where you are in the building as well as students in your classrooms in team time to help you throughout the day. So on a normal day lunchtime begins at quarter past one and it's at five past two. You can queue up to get food from the canteen or the bistro or bring in your own food and whilst you're in year seven there is a designated area for you outside where you can play spend time with your friends. Um, the timetable consists of a two-week rotor, week A and week B. Each day has, contains five lessons with a small transition period between lessons. After period two, you will have a 15-minute break time, and after period four, you will have your lunch time. And then you have period five after your lunch. Punctuality at Cali is really important and you will be issued with detentions for being late in the morning or for being consistently late to lessons. However, during the first week or so, um, there are many people around to help ensure that you will not be late and that this will not happen. If you're unsure about anything during the school day, all you have to do is go and speak to your team tutor. We'll, that will be the teacher who will be in your team every morning of every day that you're in school. Or if you can't find your team tutor, you can always go to your year team and they'll help you and help you with what you need. Expectations for uniform at Cowley are really high as we believe that every student who passes through will have high, high standards. The girl blazer is green whereas the boy blazer is black. You must always remember your tie which will be silver for the new year sevens and a bag because your bag is the most important equipment of the day. You should also know that you are not permitted to wear trainers unless you have PE lessons, but only in the PE lessons can you wear them. If you lose your tie, all you have to do is find your team tutor, talk to them and they'll send you to your head of year who will give you a spare tie for the day. Then you could go home and if you try and find your tie, if you still cannot find your tie, or you can buy a tie from the school office. Um, there are many clubs to suit many people's interests at Cowley, lots of opportunities. For example, there's the Performing Arts Department, which has a range of choirs and a show every year, as well as the Sports Departments, which um, there are many sports like rugby, football and cricket, which you can play and compete in tournaments against other schools. 
Well, you know, we all read all good dissensions here at Calla, but you can get dissensions if you make bad choices and if you're late to lesson or teen time. But, um, like I've just said, we really do hope that the New Year 7s don't get detentions. Uh, yeah, you will get a locker, however you'll have to bring in your own lock and padlock to make sure everything's secure. But don't worry about that, there's plenty of people that can help suit your interests, if you understand what I mean. Um, so, same, for instance, me at first, I liked music and it was hard for me to find other people with the same interests. But you learn to find other people like Yelly, for instance, or Tom. But, yeah, it gets really easy to find people as you move on in the year. You'll find some new friends soon, don't worry. Okay, so, the homework is very plentiful and it helps the teacher recognise your standard of learning. In other words, they understand exactly where you're at in terms of what are you doing. There's also a homework club in the library from 5 past 3 to 4 30 in an evening. And this would be very good if you either if you just want to see a friendly face or you want to actually do the homework on the computer. Either way, you can easily do your homework though. If you're having trouble doing it at home, homework up's the place for you. When I did my transition at Cowley, we spent some time with our team tutors so we can get what we need for the school day and the school week. And so you can spend time with your team tutor to find out what we can do to help you. Any advice I would give to you is that you should not be scared to speak to any teachers or pupils as everyone is kind and polite and they will help you if you need anything. So my first day at Cowley was consisted of learning the routine and starting to get to know my teachers. One piece of advice that I would give is to be yourself. There are plenty of people here that you can talk to and spend time with if you feel worried, including students and teachers, and you will find a group of friends and a group of people who you can hang around with and be friends with. Okay, so when I first started here at Cowley International College, I was very nervous and mostly excited if you want my honest opinion. A piece of advice that I would give to you would be, like Tom said, just be yourself. If, if people don't like you for you, then they're not the right people to be around. Okay, so thanks very much to Tom and Kaylee and Alicia. Some brilliant pieces of advice there. Okay, so for those of you who haven't met me, my name's Mr Leadbeater, and my job here at Cowley is I'm head of lower school. Um, as loads of people have said this morning, we're really, really sorry that you've not been able to come in person to have a look round. But it's absolutely great that you've been able to join us for this virtual event today. If you have already visited the Cowley building, I'm sure some of you have, um, you will notice a lot of differences between Cowley and your primary schools. The main one being the size, of course. Cowley is big. There are over 1,200 students on this site and 120 members of staff, more than 120 members of staff. There are loads and loads of classrooms. There are loads of corridors. There's lots of movement around the place. I know some of you are worrying about that, but I hope what you've seen today and what you're going to see for the rest of today will help, um, help with your fears and your concerns a little bit, okay? Um, Miss Thompson and myself have already spoken to all of your Year 6 teachers. We've been to a lot of your primary schools, or we've done uh, Microsoft Teams meetings. We know a heck of a lot about you before you come to us. Now, I'm very excited for you. I always tell the new Year 7s this when they arrive in September. I am very excited on your behalf because I know the opportunities that you've got at Cowley. The opportunities are fabulous. If you're into sport, we have lots and lots of sports for you to choose from. If you're musical, some of the things that we do in the music department, the drama, the acting, the school productions, fabulous. If you're into modern languages, this is the place for you. You can come, you can study your languages here. If reading is your thing, you'll have seen lots of different things about reading when you come to visit Cowley. Um, maths could be, uh, you could be a mathematical genius, 
You could be a scientist who enjoys doing experiments. All of these things are waiting for you at Cowley. That, for me, is one of the best things about high school. It's that we help you to find out what it is you're good at and where your strengths are. Everybody has got strengths. Part of being at high school is working out what you're going to do with that taking the opportunities that are on offer. And another thing that I always say to our new Year 7 cohort, I ask them to look around. Now, I can't do that at the moment, but I will do. I ask them to look around at the people who they are joining Cowley with. Some of them will become their lifelong friends. Some of them might even become their partners in future life. You're going to be meeting for the first time some people who are going to be very, very important for you. You're going to be learning lots of new skills. You're going to be finding out lots and lots of new information all the time, especially when you first join us. So make sure that you make the most of that. That's my message to you, Year 7, and I cannot wait to meet you. And that concludes our virtual tour. I know it's not quite the same as you coming in in person, but we will see you in person in September. Have a good summer and stay safe.